telling everybody that he's FBI agent Alonzo Mosley. And then Yafikoto shows up later trying to catch Robert De Niro and tells people that he's Alonzo Mosley. And they're like, you're Alonzo Mosley. And it's, <laughs> it's just, it's, it's brilliantly, brilliantly funny bit uh, in, in a, in, in a great movie. And it's a great way to see a guy playing three very, very different uh, uh, roles. And, you know, so rest in peace, Yafikoto. Uh, you will, certainly be missed um okay so we're gonna take a very very quick break and then when we come back we're gonna talk about what is without a doubt one of the scariest hours of television ever made (laughs) um and just you know not only an incredible i just i literally rewatched it two hours ago and um, yeah, I, re- I rewatched it this morning. <laughs> and I'm, and I'm, I'm watching the episode and I'm trying to figure out who the lead is. And then I realize, oh my God, it's Carrie Mulligan. Yeah. And we're, we're talking about, uh, of course, <laughs> the, the Doctor Who episode, Blink. All right, so we're going to talk about that. You guys take a quick blink and we'll be right back after the jump. We are the Literary Nerds. Welcome back to the Literate Nerds. I'm Pat Kennedy. I am joined today by uh, comic book writer and illustrator uh, Rachel Smith, um, and we're uh, we're going to talk about. Um, geez, you know what? I, I I I don't know what. It's it was from 2007. It's the season from 2007 because it's like mm-hmm. there's series numbers and there's season numbers and. You know, there's so many different. Do- it's the David Tennant version of, do- of the Doctor, so mm-hmm. we'll get that out of the way. If people want to find the episode. I'll have a, a link to it because I, I forget because I'm looking for it. It says Doctor Who season three. I'm like, it can't possibly be Doctor Who season three <laughs> <laughs> on, the, <laughs> on the IMDb. Um, but uh, no, we're talking about. So uh, we're talking about uh, the Doctor Who episode Blink. Uh, and as I was saying before to Rachel, I'm, I'm watching the opening of the episode and the opening of the episode is great. Um, mm. but the, well, the whole episode really is fantastic. It's one of the best hours of, of, of horror television I've ever seen. Um, and I'm trying to place the, the young woman who's the lead. And I, I got the IMDb page, and I'm like, oh, my God, it's Carrie Mulligan. How could I not realize it? And how brilliant she is, and what an incredible career she's having. And right now, uh, I haven't seen it yet, but Promising Young Woman is just getting, like, rave reviews from all the right people, I think. Um, was, you- this, was, was Blink one of her first roles, or...? Oh, uh, you know what? She, yeah, I mean, she didn't have a lot of stuff before that. I mean, obviously, afterwards, she did Drive, which is the first time I saw her. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, hold on, I'll pull up the IMDb I have here. <laughs> uh, always good to have uh, things footnoted before the episode. <laughs> and uh, let's see. Yeah, well, you know what? No, she only had a couple of, uh, she had about six or seven credits beforehand. Okay. Um, she did uh, a, a mini mini series version of Bleak House. Uh, okay. she, she did um, uh, Marple, which, which I would guess was a Ms. Marple TV series, I'm guessing. Um, the Amazing yes, Mi- yes. Mrs. Pritchard. Um uh waking the dead uh trial and retribution uh and then north hanger north hanger abbey which was a tv movie and then uh the, the doctor who episode um mm. but yeah but she's brilliant and so the episode starts off you know we we'll just you know give the uh the, the the opening bit and then we'll just just go talk about it and yes spoilers folks so if you want to watch the episode 
before we go into it, you know, take a, you know, we'll take a break here. Do, 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 do. Hey, we're back. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah. So, you know, she, she gets up to this mansion uh, and she appears to be an urban explorer and she be- begins photographing and she notices something written underneath the wallpaper and it's the words beware the weeping angels Mm. and then she peels more of it off and it's like this message you know and as she keeps going the message says keeps saying duck and keeps telling her to duck and then finally you know it says you know uh uh, love the doctor in 1969 and and when she finally does uh, duck a rock comes flying and nearly hits her in the head (laughs) <laughs> yeah and um, so please no please sorry i didn't mean to interrupt go ahead i just I, so the the idea being that the doctor wrote this on the wall and then someone moved into the house and wallpapered over this and i suppose the doctor just hoped that the wallpaper would would drop off in a, a way that she could see some of the writing like in years and years um I- I guess they're like rolling dice. <laughs> yeah. you know? I mean, you, it's, there there is definitely got to have a willing suspension of disbelief. I mean, Doctor Who is not yeah. so much science fiction <laughs> as it is science fantasy. Uh, I lit- I mean, is this the episode? Is the first time he says time is kind of a wobbly, yeah, wibbly, wibbly, wobbly, wibbly, wibbly, timey wimey. I'm not yeah. sure if that's the first time he says it, but yeah, it's, yeah, <laughs> that's sort of how. Because the, the whole episode is a bit of a paradox, if that's the right word. Yeah, yeah, you know, certainly. There, there are things that don't that don't that shouldn't happen unless this happens, but the thing that happens shouldn't happen if the other thing didn't happen, and it's this sort of circuitous. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it all just couldn't have happened very easily. Yeah, yeah, it's certainly not. Well, it, it's it's as I was watching the episode when um, you know right after she finds this message, there's a. a uh, oh, she goes to her friend's place, um, and and her name is Sally Sparrow is the character's name, played by mm-hmm. Carrie Mulligan. She goes to her friend's place and grabs her uh, her, her friend, uh, and they 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 go back to the house, and they're in the house looking around. There's some weirdness going on, and somebody starts ringing the doorbell, and it's a guy shows up with an envelope that he was told to bring to this house at this exact time. And I'm like, oh, the doctor's using the old Doc Brown from Back to the Future <laughs> technique. That's how Doc Brown gets in touch with Marty in Back to the Future. <laughs> and I had forgotten about that. But but as it turns out, the 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 really interesting thing in this episode um, are the monsters, uh, and that's and of course Doctor Who. Uh, for, for folks that aren't familiar with Doctor Who and want to, you know, don't want to check this out, this is a great gateway, I think, into Doctor Who, and it's a and it's a self-contained episode. You can watch it without any knowledge of the mythology, of the show, and and enjoy it really. Um, but the Weeping Angels, wow, huh? What that, a yeah. great, They're brilliant! Cr- <laughs> so please, please, I'm sorry, I keep cutting you off. I apologize. Oh no. no. Well, they're like um, they always make me think of the the boos in Mario, the ghosts. Yeah, you have to, you have to look at them to stop them from <laughs> coming to you and killing you. It's like that, but like super duper, a hundred percent scarier. Cause yeah, well, it's it's kind of like a, a take on the on the on the Will o' the Wisp. You yes. Know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the, like the, the you know if, the, if you look at them, the closer they get, you know, and and mm. uh, there are these creatures when they're observed, they turn to stone. They're quantum locked. They develop this uh, this defense so that when you see them, if they're seen by uh, anything, they're turned to stone, and you can't kill stone. But mm. then once they're unobserved, they can move in an instant. Uh, and, and what they do, they have this weird way of killing people off. They take people and chuck them into the past and Mm. then absorb the energy of the life that they would have lived. So (laughs) it's, yeah, which is explained very, very quickly, almost as if to be like, okay, yeah, but 
uh, we know this doesn't make sense, but let's get on with the, the actual story. But let's get on with it. Just so we <laughs> can like, have... Yeah, I agree. Let's get on with the story. I'll, I will buy this. <laughs> I don't yeah. need to, to say more mumbo jumbo to me. <laughs> and, and the thing is, is that it's like with, well, certain, like certainly the philosophy and ideas of, uh, of the way quantum physics work, it can kind of get away with it. But it's one of those, um, it, it's one of those really great, uh, new new monsters like a new uh, for the want of a better term like a new age monster you know that um you know doesn't come out of uh, uh, of the past or folklore you know like you know uh, mm-hmm. somebody returned to re- referred to Frankenstein recently on Twitter as the first Halloween monster because he's like the first monster that doesn't come from like a folklore background you know and and there's this is definitely, you know, one of those, you know, uh, kind of like, uh, I don't know if you ever watched the, uh, uh, the X-Files, but the character tombs on the X-Files. Mm-hmm. Have, have you ever seen that episode? Um, I, th- I think so. I've seen a, a weird smattering of X-Files. Uh, he's the, he's the guy that like, uh, that, that, uh, hibernates for 30 years and then comes out and eats five people's livers and then goes back and hibernates for another 30 years. I do remember that. Yeah. Remember yeah. That. Um, so it's like, yeah, it's like <laughs> one of these like, you know, monsters that just, uh, is created almost out of whole cloth as opposed to coming out of our, uh, hmm. um, you know, our, our, our fantasies, but, um, but anyway, so Carrie Mulligan, uh, uh, her friend disappears and the notice from her friend who's been sent back to 1920. And so she's trying to figure out what's going on. So she goes and contacts her friend's brother who uh, originally in the episode she had first met when he was buck naked. And evidently he's quite, <laughs> evidently he has nothing. He's embarrassed about something, but evidently he doesn't have anything to be embarrassed about because mm-hmm. um, she seems quite enamored by it. Um, and, uh, so eventually they, they go to a, a a police detective who, you know, makes a move on Carrie Mulligan and gets her phone number. And And she's also quite enamored by (laughs) her. He's falling in love left, right and center. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it's Carrie Mulligan. And that's the other thing that's, that's the other thing that's, that's funny about this episode is while it's scary as hell, it's also got this very very cute kind of rom-com <laughs> it's like the weeping angels kill people with meat cutes <laughs> i was gonna say like the, there is i mean this is kind of um you could say this about a lot of the doctor who but it's it's got this kind of a very warm sort of gentle humor that is sometimes a little bit naughty like the guy coming out of the <laughs> his bedroom yes. he's naked. Um, not that you see anything, but you know it's, it's implied that she can <laughs> she can yeah um, see everything. But yeah, it's the the sort of warm humor interspersed with this really quite frightening villain, and it it, it, it that's and I think that's what catches you off guard because it it puts you into this sort of rom com like oh this is very wholesome and nice, and then suddenly it's it's <laughs> very very scary. And I think that's how it it, it does what it does. Um, and that's, you know, the whole hiding behind the sofa <laughs> thing. Yeah. Like, that like, it does so well. I, well I, it, it, it coaxes you into the sofa, into the nice cosy sofa, and then suddenly you want to be behind it. <laughs> and you never know when that's going to be. Yeah, it's very, yeah, like you said, the charm of it. it it's always <laughs> had... Um, you know, and early incarnations obviously didn't have the greatest, you know, special effects and stuff. And they wanted, you know, they wanted a younger audience to be able to watch it. But still, the con- a lot of the concepts and a lot of the monsters are, you know, really like nihilistic. I mean, you mm. know, almost, almost, <laughs> there's, ne- there's never um like a, uh, uh, a villain on Doctor Who that's going halfway. They're always out to like destroy yeah. all, of ma- all of humanity, if <laughs> not all of the universe. <laughs> yeah, they're never half assed about anything, are they? <laughs> they want everything. <laughs> you know, and, and I guess his congenial, you know, gallows humor is one of the great charming things of the character. And also, I guess, one of his best defenses against these, uh, um, you know, these 
sometimes, you know, multiple.